here and for the okay. purpose of um, the recorder, I'd like everybody to state their name, please. Linda Brown. Fred Fontaine. Julie Masinski. And? Virginia Howe. Thank you. And I do believe we have a quorum. Yes. And um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Beginning at? And the time of the meeting up there is? 4.05. It's close enough. 4.05? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. We'll call the meeting to order. And um, board staff, we're uh, moving on to library. Uh, excuse me, I'd like to talk about board staff. What yeah. is that? Well, that's because Bill Lift left, I believe, and for a while we did not have uh, assistance. And um, we do have Matt Benoit, and the administrator, Matt Wojcik, is here. And Matt Benoit was here, and he will be oh, uh, okay. back so in. We will yes. get back to that when he comes back. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Um, okay. Next item is the library, and the issue there was ADA accessibility, and we need an update. Where are we with that? It was the um, having people on that committee. Yeah, I'm, so you guys had a construction subcommittee, did you? Did, when Mike Fitzpatrick was a member and he yes. sat yes. with members of the Library Board of Trustees. Yes. I don't think that's going anywhere. I think they've been sidestepped that <coughs> project in favor of their current situation, which is what the roof, uh, not the roof, ceiling. the ceiling. Yeah. And uh, I just look up and I say, <laughs> um, we've obtained three bids for the ceiling project. Um, and I'm going to have to move beyond the sh so called shortcut process because those bids were not from a statewide contractor list, they were from a wider reach and they crossed a price threshold that requires advertising. So in order to prevent anyone from challenging the award of the bid and the way it was done, we're just gonna, we're gonna go through the advertising process because it's over, it's over $50,000. Okay. Um, the project entails a set of components that total more than 50,000. So the individual pieces themselves do not, but the overall project does. A certified licensed electrician must remove all of the appliances from the ceiling okay. before the work can be done. And the work itself has a lot more to do with plastering and painting than it, you know, it's not structural at all. It's hanging wallboard onto the lattice work to basically suck the horsehair plaster back up into the, its, uh, the lats. Uh -huh. And then secure it in place with you know stronger uh, material. Okay. Then skim coating that, painting it. Then the electrician has to come back and rehang everything that goes up. So there's a fire alarm, so there's low voltage and high voltage work. And um, there are a lot of precautions being taken for the collection. So plastic sheeting is going to be hung up on the walls and draped over all of the material. So we don't have to have a huge moving project in order to get this done. The only thing that'll need to be moved is anything in the way of the staging that's yeah. required to get up. It's, it looks like a, a short squat building from the outside, but in, inside it it's a pretty tall yeah. ceiling. Yeah. So we're gonna get up there. <laughs> and that adds to the cost too, because if the contractor doesn't have their own staging, they have to rent it, et cetera, et cetera. So it's over 50 grand. Um, and the strongest bid was from an out-of-state contractor that is not on the statewide contract bid list. So I just want to make sure I'm dotting my I's and crossing my T's. But there is sufficient interest because of the project. Um, the other issue with that particular bidder is that that company divides New England into territories, okay. right? So yeah. uh, it's no mystery, it's sort of pro painting if you're familiar with that outfit. I've seen the ads. Work has been done <clears throat> in Douglas by Serta Pro Painting of Rhode Island, 
actually specifically Southern Rhode Island, because they were the winning bidder on the post office painting project. Okay. They did a brilliant job. They did a really fantastic job. And everybody looked at it and said, this is the kind of work we want. So next time we went out for a bid, of course, we went to them and asked them to code it. But they are in the sort of pro painting of Ashland, Massachusetts territory. Okay. So I want to make sure they dot their I's and cross their T's internally on the corporate side. Because obviously you would get a bid protest potentially over that issue. Um, so, but I, I don't think it's gonna take long to resolve at all. We still wanna get this work done um, during the construction season in the early spring. So Matt, um, the AD accessibility update uh, issue I think it's still going on because they're still fundraising. Yeah. And I believe they have just put their state, some of their state funds into that um, building uh, project. But they needed to get up to, I believe it was $400,000. Right. I think the interest in the ADA is because at one point they applied for a grant and didn't make it because we didn't have the proper ADA committee. So which we voted town meeting voted it it has not been appointed yet. The and that we just have to get that done. We have to find people who want so to serve. So you're going to take care of that. Yeah, the, the, the select board's appointments. Okay. Any questions, anybody? No. <laughs> no. No. And Ginger, Matt Benoit, our new community development person, um, has just joined. And Ginger is on the phone. And uh, just to let you know. Great, thanks. Um, any other questions, comments? No. Okay, then the next item is green energy. Well, and can we go back to board staff then, seeing as Matt is here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what do you have? Um, can we get, eliminate that then, or do we need to vote on it? It says possible votes. What, what would we need uh, to That vote was for? just put in there, okay, I believe. Okay, then we can eliminate number one off of this agenda. Everybody agree? Yes. All right. Okay, thanks, Linda. You're welcome. All right. Um, at the present, green energy and a status update with that. Where are we? Um, Matt, any comments, either one of you? I'll let you run with it if you want to, otherwise I have. Uh, what I can tell you, from what I understand, is that CMRPC collected all the data they needed and submitted our annual report on okay. time. Okay. Um, we have not heard back from that report or received any comments yet from the uh, the rep, is it Kelly Brown here? Yeah. Kelly Brown's over. So we haven't uh, got our comments yet back from her to see if there's any changes or modifications that need to be made. But the only report now is that we submitted that report on time uh, through CMRPC and gave her all the data she needed. Great. Hopefully we'll get some. And we did submit for a competitive round grant this time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the vast majority of the request in the current competitive grant round is for an LED retrofit of the Douglas High School. Okay. In the past, it's a very large project. So in the past, there were thoughts of you know, breaking it up, doing pieces of the building at a time. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of really strong proposals this time lined uh -huh. up. This had previously been investigated by our project expediter and put on the list. It is actually an excellent project. It will score very high because of the nature of the savings. The LED, they, they pretty much always win. You can pretty much always get that. Unless there's just way too many people applying, you'll pretty much always get it. So that that's the flagship. And I think we, I'm less optimistic about um, HVAC from the fire department. I think we put that on there. And you know the difficulty there is that our primary benefit energy wise of putting micro splits mm -hmm. in particular you know heat pumps mm -hmm. in the fire station would be heating and saving 
rather fantastic amount of money on the extraordinary expense. We have an extremely inefficient furnace. Um, so we've tried to like sidestep the thing. We, we, it was a uh, coilless, so it was, you know, constantly running just for domestic hot water. So we, we did away with that. We put a water heater that's fired with propane and it only runs when on demand. Mm -hmm. So substantially reducing the amount of time that it runs, the, that the furnace runs. Um, they don't do heat pump projects for only for the cooling aspect. You have to have heating and cooling and you have to have requisite yeah. savings. So their estimate is the ROI was just a really long time period. So we put it, we bundled it in with the LED project, the high school, hoping that the total score, average score, gets us into everything being funded. I'm just not optimistic. It's not. Okay. You know, Kelly doesn't give us a warm and fuzzy on, on that one. So we may seek, um, once our ARPA consultant is on board, because we did authorize a town meeting, approve the funds to hire a consultant to do our eligibility determinations for ARPA funding. ARPA funding has this weird carve out deep in the language of the bill that HVAC projects in vital public buildings, and they were thinking prisons and hospitals, you know, congregate settings. But we might be able to make the case that a fire department where people are sleeping overnight because they work 24 hour shifts mm -hmm. would tip the balance and say this is necessary for COVID resilience and response and safeguarding the public. So we're going to follow that angle too. You know, those are sixty seventy thousand dollar project mm -hmm. the other thing i'd like to do is finish with the roof and the insulation on the building before we get too excited about the most efficient location and and uh basically the rating of what we need and you're talking fire department fire department okay. so the fire building um when the building was completed it seems that the insulation was really heavy across most of the roof line and a little bit weaker in one section of the building. And then over time, what's happened is as people work on the, the roof for different reasons, they may have moved something out of their way and not put it back. So we've done some thermal imaging because we have a thermal imaging camera for the fire department to try to capture where the heat is escaping the building. There is a concrete uh, mortar problem on the of course it has to be the direction of the prevailing winds, right? So it's on the westerly side of the building. My layperson's judgment is that it doesn't look like the mortar was ever put in. So there's actually, it's open to the outside, but above the drop ceiling. So when you get a big gust of wind at the fire station, what happens is all the there's a change in pressure above the ceiling tiles. Ceiling tiles vibrate up oh, and down. Gee. The whole thing whistles, and it's nightmarish from the perspective of energy efficiency. So, but we can solve that with the roof project and with some pointing. Um, I'm yep. tempted to go over there with a can of spray foam, and I might just do that. <laughs> no, I don't think you should. <laughs> but uh, I'd rather not. But that's where we are with it uh, okay. on green energy. Uh, our uh, investigation also involved, it's not really building facilities, but it, tangentially it's you because we did put those charging stations outside with grant funds. Uh -huh. We wanted to get some electric or at least partially electric vehicles that would make use of the charging stations, but the incentives are very weak. And this, this green energy scoring system drives me berserk because we don't get credit for energy savings if we don't replace an existing inefficient vehicle. We don't have vehicle for staff, so we're not gonna be able to get the credit in a competitive grant application because we're not taking an electric vehicle and replacing a fossil fuel powered vehicle, unfortunately. So we'll we'll have to do that on our own town meetings on dime when it's when the time is appropriate. Okay. Thank you. That's it? That's it for uh, anybody questions for Matt? No. Okay. Ginger, you're good? I'm good. I wish he would speak up a little bit more though. I'm sorry. Okay. <coughs> no, that's okay. Can you hear me? Is it better now? The voice closer to him. Is I can hear you fine, Shirley. Okay. Um that's because the phone Yeah, physically yeah. on the phone for just fine. Turn it, can you turn it back? 
so that he can shoot you. Hang up on her on accident. <laughs> Don't disconnect. <laughs> Okay, we'll try that. Speak, Matt, if you could, and you, see if that You really up. did it. You there? Yes, I am. Okay. okay. Don't, don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> it's like a game of Jenga. Yeah. If you just move that receiver a little bit more, we're going to lose. Just let us know if you still have trouble, okay, Ginger? Yes, thank you. All right. Okay, item five is the municipal backup generator, and where are we with this? That's number four. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. Thanks, Linda. Number four. <laughs> so the design contract was awarded to McRitchie yeah. by the select board. Contract was executed. The fee was negotiated. The fee is very reasonable, uh, well below the percentage that we Thought. had expected. Um, we have an appointment set up with Howard. Howard Gerber is going to be the lead electrical engineer on the project. Good. He is coming January 5th to do a walkthrough and debrief with staff that have up, you know heavy electrical draws in their departments. Uh, he's available, he was available to do this right after Christmas, but Adam Furno is gonna be out of town. And we wanna do this on a Wednesday so that our IT folks can participate in the discussion. So the earliest date was January 5th, but that project's gonna kick off okay. at that time. All right. Hopefully it goes well. The only caveat I would have for everybody's managing everybody's expectations is that we are being told that the lead time on generators is fairly substantial. Yes, I think we so, mentioned that way back. I think what Howard's intent is, and I'll, when he's, I, I'm hopefully we'll find a way to get him to your next meeting so you can eyeball him and have a conversation with him. Um, I think his intention is to more or less immediately jump to the quick and determine what size generator he wants to recommend and just order it and get the wheels turning while he does the rest of the work. Because uh, once that's, the rest of the design is, isn't going to be incumbent or dependent on, on the size of the generator. Mm -hmm. Then we're not going to go too far up or down either direction. Okay. Questions, anybody? Oh. No. No. All right, next item is bad luck pond outlet bridge. And I see them again. Again, uh, they're really working there today. I came by there, and I think the the big piece of equipment is out of there. But for now, anyhow. So uh, uh, there's been a lot of progress here. Uh, as you know, the box culvert was dropped into place. Um, the walls have been poured. We have had very beneficial weather, so we haven't had deep freezing weather. Yeah. So we've been able to continue with pouring concrete. There was a big pour, I believe it was Friday, was one of their bigger pours. Mm -hmm. And that needed to cure for a while before additional work could be done on top of what was poured. So our last remaining hurry up and get it done <laughs> issue is the pavement mm -hmm. that would go over the top. Mm -hmm. So the, we have a concrete structure, a rubber membrane will go over the top of that. It has to maintain temperature so that it adheres to the concrete below and then the asphalt will be poured over the top of that. I know they've been working around private property owners and finishing up the gravel and the riprap and the landscaping to smooth that out. So we're getting very close to a good spot with this. We just knock on wood for about two more weeks of decent weather. Mm -hmm. um, on the other side of this, I know folks that have property on the pond have been happy because now after the beavers have been removed well. humanely, <laughs> <laughs> the water levels are dropping and people are able to get their stuff out of the water, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, so and it's, the project's in really good shape. After their initial delays, yeah. All we could have hoped for was that they would be in this position now with good weather and so far so good. Good. Okay. Anybody? Questions? Comments? Nope. Nope. Okay. Next item is the municipal fire alarm. That one we keep deferring to after the roof is done. Yep. Okay. And now um, municipal gym windows and you were looking at a different approach, Matt? Yeah. Um, 
And you had one, I So believe. yeah, the initial reach out to the statewide contracts via the trades, so-called trade groups, Yeah. we got zero responses. We put the advertisement back out. We have uh, one very reputable contractor who has uh, an appointment set up with us to come do a walkthrough. And How's we have every reason to believe, I think it's next week. It's before Adam leaves, so they're gonna meet up. Um, the contractor just wants to be absolutely sure about the wording of our contract that he's gonna be able to do all the timing. So we gotta coordinate with asbestos removal, but um, I won't pull any punches here. I, I don't want to sweat every last detail of procurement because I feel like if we just keep trying, we're just not gonna get to some magic number and all the rest. Yeah. Um, the original estimate of the cost of this was really dependent a large, in large part on there being a design professional doing a lot of design work. Mm -hmm. And uh, following Selectman Fitzpatrick's advice on this, it's not necessary. Right. It's a window, for God's sake. So right. we're, no, we're going to skip all that and jump right to the installation of the windows. Yeah. There'll be a center post. The windows will go in, you know, basically a two-pane window. And we're working, I guess, the last unknown piece of the quote is the blinds. That would, I really would like them to be able to control them remotely with uh, like a TV clicker from the floor because mm -hmm. then they go up and down. As long as nobody loses the clicker. Yeah. <laughs> right? Don't lose the clicker. Don't yeah. let the kids play with the clicker. Yeah. But um, so I anticipate, uh, Madam Chair, that this will be a spring project and we'll finally have it the contract settled okay. very soon. But you think they'll do a walkthrough next week? Yes. Okay. We'll find out on the next meeting. Yeah. All right. Any questions on that? No. When's the walkthrough? Yeah. I think it's next week. I I can check. Can I multi can I do this? Can I check my email and sure. talk to you at the same time? While I'm searching for Adam Bruno. Oh, you can let us know by email. Yeah. No, it's I, I found it easy enough. Um, I just spoke with Joe from Area Glass. He is meeting with the Shade Company in the next couple of days to walk the gym. So that's this week, he stated he is taking it slow with the quote. He wants to do everything correctly, going through the language of the bid. He will send me over the cost without the shades tomorrow to give us a reference to where he is at. So, really, once the blinds come in with their quote, we'd have a number. That the we number. Uh, the number will fit the budget, and we'll let the contract. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. And you'll let us know when the walkthrough is. The date. Or did you say? Yeah, he didn't tell me. Okay. But let it, do an email if you could, or a call. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next item is public safety radio system. Where are we on this? So we are now. Um, we have a project meeting every Monday with the project uh, lead, uh, Riley Tuttle from Marcus Communications. Yeah. Because they've begun their initial ramp up for this. So we have begun negotiations with the towers. We're making a lot more progress with industrial communications in Webster than we are with the tower owner in Douglas. However, it turns out there's a lot of history behind that tower. Not that our chair might know anything about that. Maybe, but, maybe not. <laughs> which, which tower? The one on the Webster? On the, one? On the, water, on the water tower on uh, oh, Church Street. Yeah. Okay. The town had had what declined. What you think that? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. And uh, <laughs> I thought it made a lot of great steps. So you didn't want a lattice tower. There's a whole bunch of crazy stuff that tower companies do that you didn't want. It. So you got a monopole instead of a lattice. The FCC got involved at one point and the case was remanded to the zoning board for further action compliance with FCC. So the poll had to be allowed. But fortunately, the zoning board, when it made its final decision, required the company to allow municipal access for public safety. So our equipment has been on that tower all along, and we have never paid a dime in terms of lease money. 
So my intention is to not pay a dime ever again. The only thing is the, the microwave equipment that we're installing will be larger than our analog equipment that's there now. So there will need to be a structural engineering report and a building permit so that we're obviously operating within safe parameters. All of this stuff is rated for crazy wind speeds, so it really should be okay. But So we're not negotiating space in the tower because we already have it. We're not negotiating rental because we're, we've never paid it before and we shouldn't have to now. So I think we're probably going to be able to move that along fairly quickly. Okay. The alterations to public buildings that will be required are on the school side, on the high school side. So there are two pieces there. We were pretty much all set with the tripod that's going to go on the roof. It's only, a, it's not very tall. Mm -hmm. uh, the roof loads are adequate, and that's all been checked out. The other piece of this, and, and if I drive you nuts with the technicalities, you can always raise your hand and wave at me, but <laughs> we have two microwave locations, and then we have a third location that's going to transmit without the benefit of microwave because there's no line of sight to either of the other two microwave transmission sites. Okay. So the way to carry that traffic, we need a, what's called an extended local area network. So it's fiber, computer fiber wire that will connect the fire station to the monopole from the monopole to this building and this building over to this building because this is where we're dispatching from and from here over to the schools and it will be simulcasting to, and the radios will vote they'll choose whatever transmitter they're closest to and they have a clearest connection to spectrum has to extend our existing fiber network up to the schools and then at, on the school site they need to install a server rack with four bays. You know, there's going to be the actual server itself, and then there'll be probably a switch and emergency power backup, and you know, another item that I'm not entirely sure what they're saying they're going to install. But that's not the radio company, that is Spectrum. So that project, we've been trying to get Spectrum together with the school facilities director, and there've been vacations and other events and things that have prevented that communication from happening. But that is the last condition precedent that must be met before the entire thing can be ruled out. The equipment has been purchased, so we're not looking at lead time problems. The equipment's been purchased and sitting in a warehouse. This was a term of the contract. We wanted them to go and buy it and hold it at their facility, their secure facility. So once we this all clears up, we should be all set. Our FCC licenses were approved. So there isn't really any roadblock here. In the meantime, We've got some workarounds in place um, so that people can at least talk to each other. There are limitations if you are a scanner listener. When we are on the outside boundaries of the town, you're going to find that um, specifically ambulances and dispatch are going to switch over to uh, a software application in order to be able to talk to each other. We had to move our ambulance traffic, radio traffic, onto our UHF because the inverters, the power converters on the ambulances um, generate so much RF, they interfere with our VHF signal. So we were actually, we were losing communication with our ambulances when they were using their mobiles from their from the piece of equipment. There's a lot of technicality there, but Marcus just basically put the entire fire department onto UHF and took all the police traffic off UHF because they have a VHF arrangement. Uh, all of this shuffling is um, necessary but also short-lived, not, not costing us anything. Yeah, um, you were talking about fiber optics and that going from the school and the fire department to here and that will be on telephone poles? Yes. So if we get a tree limb or a tree that falls on the poles where communication goes out? Hmm. Until that pole is so, there's an emergency, nobody can communicate, I mean. You will still, there'll still be a transmitter there, right? So you'll still have a repeater that you can get to. 
but you won't be simulcasting with the rest of the system if you knock down on this side of town, on this leg. Yeah. It's still a, a drastic improvement to what we're doing right now where we're, not, we're unreadable, so we're not, even, we're not even reaching something that can repeat our signal. Um, this has been uh, something that we've talked about quite a bit, and what is the risk of that, and what are the redundancies, and... Um, I hate to see a, an area that out of, you know, like a hurricane or a tornado yeah. comes through, and, and because it's actually something that's by wire, it nobody can communicate because of that one area that's out. Yeah. So as long as we can reach an active cell tower, both police and fire, their, their backup, their ultimate backup is an app called Zello, which is a push to talk app with the data carried over the wireless cell phone network. So if in, it's not as good as having a radio, it's not the same, but it is a completely different system not tied to the fiber optic. So mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things, we feel like we've, we've covered it as best as we can. We have only yeah. one cable provider in Douglas, yeah. and that's yeah. Charter. So we can't, it, it, we could probably strong arm Verizon into bringing up, but it would be incredibly expensive and they probably wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's kind of where we are with that. Fred, do you have any question? No, no, just uh, uh, be next to impossible to get Verizon to that. Yeah. yeah. Ginger, any questions? Yeah, I, I think I want to think about it for a while. I have um, one myself because when we were looking at this whole thing before we approved it or, or recommended it, is this going to take care of the issue of like Sutton coming in and losing power? because of what our system? Right, so we should, in the future, so the definition of victory, we're not gonna pay these guys until we reach this goal. Yeah. <clears throat> we will no longer experience interoperability issues. All of the VHF traffic in town should be carried over our system. Okay. They may have to switch to our channel, but they're not gonna be struggling to communicate with us right now because we're repeating on, on things that they can't read. Um, and it's also true that our repeaters should no longer cancel each other out on the fire ground or on an emergency medical response because that was an issue for a while too. Yeah. So that was, frankly, that was a workmanship issue and we have, by changing vendors, we've resolved that. Okay. So um, that picture is improving significantly. Good. From one case over the other. Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Yeah. You good? Thank yep. you. Thank you. You're all set, Ginger. I guess so. <laughs> You'll. If you have other questions, we can always. Well, we'll be coming back to it next month anyhow. But all right. That's you right. can give. Here. We're going to revisit it again. Yeah. And also, <laughs> if you think of something, you can call uh, Matt and or email him and. Sorry, Matt, but yep. I'm giving you <laughs> either no one of you. No problem. Okay, next item is the municipal main roof replacement, and you were doing, I believe, uh, RFP or? I'm working on the RFP on that. I, I, so I've, what's not on this list of the are the things that were approved by town meeting only in, Ju in November. Uh, so we have the fire station roof and the main roof here, and I am working with Selectman Fitzpatrick, who knows a thing or two about roofs, to come up with a good yep. written purchase description or job spec. I, again, I, I res want to resist using a design professional. I think it would just make a lot more expensive. A roof is a roof, especially in the case of the fire station where it's bundles of shingles and yeah. and waterproofing and, and you know simple things. I'm going to rely upon uh, that assistance. We have the plans for the building, so I've gathered all the materials for the RFQ that would be sent out, RF, um, IFB that would be sent out to the okay. contractors. I'm just waiting for the, the job specs to be drawn up. Again, this would be spring work, so the goal is to 
get it advertised ready to go. in the winter and have it ready to go. I think it's going to make it easier for us to get bidders because when we say, well, we expect you to start work in May and finish by June, it's going to, it, that changes their dynamic rather than trying to get them to show up. But obviously, they wouldn't do it now. But um, anything in the short time frame, it's really difficult to get people. And it's also difficult to find certain materials. And I can't tell you one week to the next what's going to be a shortage or not. Mm -hmm. uh, understand. So. Yeah. But the, the, that project's going to go, that is next on the, uh, okay. my list of things to do. Okay, uh, next item is the status of the oil spill. Is that ongoing as far as monitoring? So, there's going to be a total of six monitoring wells. Three indoors and three outdoors. The three indoor monitoring wells have already been drilled. Uh, they took an initial, you know, sample that's not a valid sample because it was you know, brand new. Um, there was the smell of petroleum product, but none detectable in a chemical test. The three outdoor holes will be dug next week. So they're taking this week off. They had some reason that they had to take this week off. And they'll be outside, and you've probably seen the dig safe markers out in the yard here, the red flags with electricity. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're cautiously optimistic that this did not migrate to the water table under the building. <coughs> um, and we just hold out hope that that's true. But it will take several months of sampling to make a final determination. Okay. Any questions? Anybody about the oil spill? No. Well, that was one oil spill. The other oil spill, since it's the agenda item is loosey-goosey enough, I will talk about the other oil spill at the elementary school oh. where uh, Oil was delivered in error. It was supposed to go to the primary school. The driver brought it to the elementary school. He did not check the level in the tank, turned his pump on. By the time he realized that he was spilling oil everywhere, uh. he had about 30 gallons of number two heating oil all over the yard at the elementary school. It blew through the vent. Um, <clears throat> so good news is that it didn't go anywhere. You know, the initial uh, contaminated soil was scraped up put into a storage container, and subsequent tests are all negative. Good. So now the only expense will be the disposal of the contaminated soil, which may not be a trivial sum. It is the it is our stated goal to have the, con the oil um, supplier pay all of those expenses. It was not our error. It was their error, their negligence. Yeah. And... Um, Town Council has been apprised of all the details of that, and hopefully it'll be a conversation and not a litigation, because it should be fairly easy to determine. Yeah. And since there is no migration into deeper levels of soil, that's probably the best case scenario for our vendor, and they ought to take it. Yes. So. I have a question. Yeah. There's no automatic shutoff when the tank's full, like your own home? Or you your would, gas, you would gas tank. think. Right? Yeah. Um, wow. I don't know enough about this. I mean, I just remember, I get propane now, so I don't hear it, but there's a whistle. Right? Yeah. And the whistle, I don't know if it starts or stops when you're done. Like, whatever it was, he wasn't paying attention to it. But your own car gas tank, when you're, you're at the yeah, pump. Yeah, it shuts it off. off yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's got to be a very simple device. And they never ask you how much is in there when you water it. No, I say come and fill me up. I mean, yeah. So yeah. <coughs> our new vendor, the municipal vendor, not the school department's vendor, because they go through a buying group, we did our own bit. Our vendor goes in and checks every time. So we are extremely happy with Fraticelli. They have done a wonderful job. They come in, they check the oil gauges. All right, you need this much, and then they they're careful to double check everything. Okay. Um, so, so we're very grateful. There is no safety shut off. I, I, I apparently yeah. put it this way: there probably should be, and it may help us in our negligence case to say why wouldn't it automatically shut off? Right? 
Yeah. I think it would be something that would be demanded by yeah. an insurance company. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> okay. So Thank you. One. Yes. All right. Anything else? Anything else, Matt, you, either one of you want to bring up while we're here before we get into our minutes that we're finally getting? And that's great. I think uh, the only thing I want to go over, Madam Chair, if you'll yep. indulge me, is this conversation that's occurring at the select board level about public safety, highway department, building specs and needs. And the, the select board formed a subcommittee to consider the um, basically, what are the minimum requirements of the operations of police, fire, and highway? Just in order to begin to gather information on, you know, what's going to be the potential best solution for the town monetarily. Okay. You know, is it to, to build one big building for all three departments? Is it to build one building and then fix the other two? Is it, what's the best way to go? But we're not there yet. But, the initial yeah. conversation is simply has to be how much space do we have now? How much space do we really need? Because we have been shoving things into old vacant buildings to keep them dry in the winter and all these workarounds and they've been fine. But now we're starting to get to the point where we have a lot of equipment. Some of it's brandy spanking new and we don't want it to be exposed that way. So where should we be putting all this stuff? What are the condi working conditions inside the buildings? Just establish the baseline facts of what is the condition. And that, since the Board of Selectmen is charged with that duty under the law, they are responsible for the assets of the town, they need to do that inquiry. A needs assessment was written into the bylaw for this commission. Mm -hmm. You would do a needs assessment. After that, I think it's another step after. The reason why I think the board is going to hold on to it for a little bit longer is we also need to have a more broad conversation about what is the scope of this discussion. If the scope of the discussion is construction of an asset that will last for 20 or 30 years, then it, looking at Matt Benoit, we're going to turn to our planner. You know, what is the potential build out of the town? What is our current population growth? What is our current employment growth? Mm -hmm. And therefore, spec a building that will last the town for a long time and will be a cost effective solution. And there's more than one way to skin that cat, by the way. You don't just have to build a building that is your 30 year building, you can build a 10 year building, but build it in such a way that modules can be added with time. So leave room for the addition, build out appropriate uh, infrastructure connections inside the building so that when you, if you did, it, if you need 400 amps for the big, the final building, put a 400 amp box in, even if you only use 200 amps now, mm -hmm. you're going to just add circuits as you add to the building, et cetera, et cetera. That conversation has to happen at the board level. There has to be guidance from our chief executive board on what their intention is, what they want to plan for. I think at that point, when they decide those overall high altitude parameters for the building, then the, the nitty gritty of the needs assessment correctly comes back to building facilities. And at that point, um, conversation would occur about, well, should a design professional be retained? What are the, what are the exact specs that they want to look at? We're trying to learn from the example of our not so far away community of North Smithfield, Rhode Island. And if you follow the Valley Breeze and the news in North Smithfield, I know there's a magic line between Rhode Island and Massachusetts. None of us is supposed to cross it. <clears throat> but North Smithfield, if you're familiar with the town, their police station is in the municipal annex, which is right across the street from Park Square, Our Lady of, uh, Our Lady of Victories, I believe, in one socket. Um, and it's no longer adequate for the North Smithfield Police Department. So say some. Whereas others have said, well, it's a nice old building. If we just fixed it up, we would have a more cost effective solution. The architect wasn't given sufficient guidance. So the architect has now gone out and specced basically a new building without really having a firm charge. And now, of course, you're getting this political mm -hmm. hornet nest because mm -hmm. there was never consensus reached on what it was that they wanted to do. 
So all of the people, they actually have a committee like this in North Smithfield, all the people who served on that committee for years and had said the municipal annex needs to be improved, that's the most cost effective solution. Now they're saying what? So the last couple of public meetings on the topic have been absolute bedlam. There's no agreement. And the taxpayers are scratching their heads saying what's the difference? An $18 million something police station or you know seven or eight million dollars with the municipal annex? We're trying to avoid that situation <laughs> by having a data-driven, well-researched, well-thought-out scope of activity. Don't hire a design professional until you can tell them exactly what it is you want them to spec out. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. I know that's what Selectman Fitzpatrick feels like he was trying to do um, when he suggested it to the board. Sure. So this initial conversation, <coughs> when did we post it for? To be for the 21st next week. The 21st. Of the Selectman's meeting? No, so the subcommittee that they created, which would be Selectman Fitzpatrick, uh, Chief Vincent, um, Assistant Chief Manning, Chief Miglianico, uh, Mark Dunleavy, who's a retired police officer, still puts in a lot of time here. You know, who am I forgetting? You, uh, Matt Benoit, John Furno, Adam Furno. And what time is this? Three o'clock. Three o'clock in the afternoon. On what day? Twenty first. Twenty first. A Tuesday. Yeah. First day one. It's a public body, so we will post in accordance with the Open Meetings Act, and we'll be recording the meetings on video. You said three three o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. We had some discussion early on about because the word feasibility kept being tossed around. In any large building project in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, feasibility means something very specific. It is a set of drawings that leads to a go, no go decision by the awarding authority. We're nowhere near that yet. So we're not designing to that level of specificity. We're trying to gather the information Infamy. needed to inform the design. So in project management class, they would call that pre-work or um, survey. You know, situation assessment. So police and fire and highway. highway. Good. All right. Thank you. Fortunately, there's a nice little blueprint from the town that they worked in previously where we did almost this exact same thing. Uh -huh. So I kind of have a nice little outline to follow. Okay. So they did a whole uh, public facility. Good. Was it Natick or Auburn? It was in Auburn. Auburn. Yeah, so ultimately, they, they didn't end up choosing any of the options because the data-driven study showed that it would be far more expensive to pursue a lot of those options. But I'd be happy to dig in a lot of that mm -hmm. and kind of mirror that procedure here at Douglas. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know. When I uh, first got on the board with some other people, um, a board of selectmen, we toured all the town buildings. We wanted to know, okay, what's happening there? And what what are the needs? And yeah. A lot of it really narrowed down a response time for the emergency vehicles. Yes. That's so the catalyst for yep. a lot of the decisions that were made. Yeah. And, and their accessibility to heavy duty areas that they needed to get to. Right. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, any other questions before we go into the minutes? No. All right, we have um, quite a few p uh, minutes. Well, okay. I only got three um, by um, email. Okay. So I, there's one that hasn't been read, I guess the October? Yes, and I did ask Jen for that because I hadn't got it either. I thought it was me. Oh, I, I just thought it hadn't been typed up yet, so I didn't... Uh, let me see. And I see it's in our packet tonight. Yep. So we You've can, got it. Okay. We can read it. And sure. And next meeting to read. All right. Okay. On the October one. Okay. Yes. All right. So the first set is um, Wednesday, March 17th. And I have one um, correction on number eight. Where it says uh, the second line, it says uh, constriction outside of mounting. It should be um, any or public building. works or building construction. Yeah, thank you. So it needs to be construction. Thank you, Linda. And I have just a typo up under 
number three um, status update and instead of additional monies with it should be which brings the total up to three hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve as corrected? I make a motion to approve the March 17th, 2021 meeting minutes as amended. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. So, so voted. Okay, nice to get those out of the way. And then uh, I believe the next one is May 19th. Am I right? No, April. April. April, sorry. <coughs> April 21st, 2021. I didn't see anything. Do I hear a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve the April 21st, 2021 meeting minutes as presented. Second. Motion made by Linda, seconded by Mike. I mean, I'm sorry, Fred. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Ginger? Yeah, Shelley, you want to make sure that people, all the people that are voting were present at that meeting, please? On this one, <coughs> April 21st? Well, Sean is in here, I'm here, Mike Fitzpatrick, no, Linda Brown, Fred, and you. So we're okay. Okay. Yep. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm not, so thank you. Okay, and the October one you want to wait this um, Wednesday, May 19th, 2021. I didn't have any questions. Um, I do number 10. The concrete floor was done, not with done. Okay, probably typo. Any further? Corrections, additions, amendments? If not, do I hear a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve the May 19th, 2021 meeting minutes as presented. Second. Motion made by Linda, seconded by Fred. Any questions? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Fred? Aye. Okay, opposed? So voted, thank you. And do you want to hold on the uh, October 7th? Yeah. You, you, okay. We'll come back to that and that will be on our um, October, I mean, sorry, January um, meeting. Yep. We also have, um, from the last time, we had a uh, meeting schedule for 2022. Um, I do have a problem myself with a January 19th meeting. I probably won't be able to make it. So wondering if we could, if we have a quorum, that wouldn't matter without, you know, but if not, um, I'd ask that we move it to maybe Thursday. Is that? Yeah, let's move it. Fine by me. Yeah. Yep, so yeah, that would be the 21st? Yeah, uh, 20th. Oh, yeah. Whatever works for you, Shirley. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, building and facilities moved over to Thursday, the January 20th at um, 4 p.m. All right. I make a motion to approve the uh, meeting schedule for 2000. 22 as amended except with the uh, correction of just january as amended okay thank you good second. second motion made by linda seconded by fred all in favor aye opposed so vote aye thank you ginger all right thank you everybody i think that does it for us um thank you both yep. mats thank you for your uh, thorough updates yeah. yes Feel informed. <laughs> and Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever <laughs> holiday. Hope your family and all of you enjoy and stay safe. Same to you. Thank oh. you. I make a motion to adjourn at. Oh, what is it? Five. Four thirty. Five. 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 Oh yeah.
Do I hear second. a second? So motion made by Linda, seconded by Fred. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ginger? Aye. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs>